Because scientists think they used to eat honey and seal picnics. Oh my. It can't be. Ah, my dear Dr. Dinosaur. Welcome to Barren Park. This is Barren Park, a game of filling big squares with other shapes that are resolutely not squares in a fashion that is frequently immensely satisfying. It's quick, you can often whip through a game in under an hour, and it plays with between two to four humans. And today we've also got the expansion for Barren Park, the Bad News Bears. The setting of a Barren Park imagines a world in which bears are brought back to life using ancient DNA and kept within a park for the entertainment of humans. I guess it's almost cruel if you think about it, even if it is a marvel of science. But fear not, because Barren Park is merely a work of fiction. If you look closely, you can in fact see that the bears within these cardboard shapes are merely drawings. We first reviewed this back in 2017, and since then it's been a little bit of a staple in my collection. The game itself is easy. You have pieces which you then cover up tiles on your board with, and then depending on what you cover up, you then take those things from the middle board. More things to cover up, more things to get more things. It's the circle of things. And this middle shared board throughout the game gradually diminishes, offering fewer point rewards and tiles that look less and less tasty. And three special objectives randomly chosen each game often have players vying for the same pieces, like bears wrestling each other about who gets the last marmalade sandwich. I focus on pandas and you're off building a big river and then it's all over and we count up the numbers. But the golden rule of Baron Park, the thing that for me makes it sing, 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 is on each of these little squares that you add to your park, you've always got one space you're not allowed to build in. You always have to build around, leaving that completely clear. Or at least you're not allowed to touch these little bits until you've completely filled up the rest of that grid. At which point, this flipping hole that's really annoying and ugly and unpleasant gets immediately replaced with a little golden bear statue of the highest value currently available. Ooh, it's like ASMR for your fingers. I love it. But what is that noise? Ah, uh, it's the bad news bears. Science has done something unbelievably terrible using the DNA of bad news bears to bring big bad bears back into existence. But don't worry, the security systems in Barren Park are state of the art. There's no way that any of the big bad bears can escape. Also state of the art are the monorails. Oh boy. Roller coasters, for people who are terrified of fun, there's nothing I love more than a really good monorail. And the bad news bears do not disappoint. From the first green piece you place onward, you can choose to taint that fertile piece of verdant land with the scaffolding hubris of man. And from that point onwards, whenever you place a new green tile, which is exactly three spaces away from the last bit of scaffolding that you placed. You may place another piece of scaffolding and take a little monorail thing and get the points for that. And yeah, the only other rule is you can only ever put the scaffolding down at the exact moment that you place the green tile and you can only have one monorail line, which means you have to be continuing the same one. You can't be spreading off, it can't fork off, and it has to zigzag like this at 90 degree angles. It can't go in a straight line. I guess it would just fall over more easily. This was gonna be the point where I just sort of gently nudge it and it would all fall over and I go, physics, but actually it's, it seems fairly solid. So don't know what the zigzagging's about. It's just cool, isn't it? Zigzag. Ooh. And after that, it's just another way to get points at the end of the game. Another element of spatial planning to kind of add into your head, but one that provides you with substantial visual delights. The second new thing in this box, well, 
It's the bad news bears. So these are just huge bears, big. Bad bears, bears so big the government just, the government just wants to get rid of them. Which means at either the very beginning or very end of your turn, you can trade one of your green park tiles for any one of these huge bears. Matt, stop! Stop the review! You're making a huge mistake. I come from the future, bearing grave news. You've made a mistake in your Baron Park review. You said you had to just trade uh, one of the park tiles to get one of the big grizzly tiles, but that's not true. You have to trade a park tile and one of these normal uh, bear, bear tiles, and then you can get one of the big grizzly ones, which fundamentally changes some of the points you made in your original review. Although not, not that much. It just means you have to use a bit more strategy to get the right shape of, of grizzly token to to cover up enough things that you can get enough tokens to maintain the, 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 the combo flow and it's still everything else you said is fine. But you cannot let this review go online. If you do, then in the future, when people see this version of the review, they'll, they'll comment saying, hey, didn't you upload a video about Burton Park a couple of weeks ago? And you'll, you'll have to be like, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. This is the first time we've done it. We definitely didn't get a rule wrong, even though it was quite clear in the manual and repeated. And I, the, the Council of Board Games will have your head, please. Quick, just just carry on with the review. The future's fine, by the way. There's nothing wrong in the future, really. I'm just, I just have, I could do with a haircut and I, I, I wash and I've forgotten how to, to wear clothes. There's no time, go. If you keep making these trades, you're gonna fill up your park a lot more quickly than other players, which means if you're savvy, you really can just close off the game before anyone else has a chance to get their bears whirring. But it's not super quick to just end because now if you do play with the big bears, you've got this additional fifth exit tile, which means your park is gonna end up being five squares big at the end. And whether or not you can pull off this rapid explosion bear tactic, Depends on you really planning ahead quite carefully. Let me ask you a personal question. How reliant do you think you are on toilets? Because you'd be filling up your park, you'd be trading every single green tile you got for one of these point scoring whoppers. And everyone else would be scared because you'd have filled up four and a half bits of park. Everyone thinks, oh gosh, I'm not gonna get to finish my park. And then you start to stall because you end up with all these little bitty gaps. All these things you can't plug because you traded away the little pieces that did that. Really, the bad news bears just changes the game in terms of you needing to plan ahead more. Rather than drip feeding you all of these different tiles gradually, you cover up most of them all at once, but then you really have to budget. And if you get the budget wrong, well, it's disastrous. And I really, really like it. This adds a new axis to the game, a wall that you can push against if you want to make your game a bit less forgiving. It's a Pandora's box of hubris. And if you want, you can just fiddle with the latch a bit and then step away, or you can dive in and see what happens. I always do that and usually it ends very badly for me and I lose the game, but that is both fine and wonderful. Also in this box, you've got some new objectives, and I can fully recommend both Baron Park and this expansion, the Bad News Bears. Although there's really nothing I can say about the additional bits that this game adds that doesn't really just come across as being a bit tepid, frankly. It doesn't dramatically change the nature of the game, it doesn't change how it feels to play, and it doesn't really make it that much more complicated either, which means if you're looking for an entirely different experience, it's not gonna do it. If you're looking for something to really crunch your brain against, still not gonna quite do it either. But I guess a bit similarly to Feast for Odin, it just adds some stuff that kind of feel like could have always been there. And it's nice to have more of it. The only thing I would say is the complexity here is just enough to tip it into being a game where you really don't look up around the table very often. You just build your own little park in your own little world. And that's not a complaint by any means, it's just something that's worth knowing about. Because if you've just played the original Baron Park game, you'll know that these pieces in the middle are squeezed enough that even if you're not really keeping that much of an eye on it, there will be one or two times in the game where you look up and go, Oi, you nicked all the pandas! Who's nicked all them? I want one more panda and you've taken them all! Which is, which is nice, it's a valuable part of the game. With more of these options, more fiddliness, there's less of that.
And finally, please do remember that bringing back bears to life from DNA found in chunks of amber is something that could only be properly approached by professionals. And if you do try and do it yourself, just remember that even small bears can be bigger and badder than you might anticipate. And if you do get yourself into a fuzzy pickle, well, sunshine, you're on your own. Bear safe, bear bye. Well, if you like bears, then why not come to Baron Park with me, uh, Mr. Bear. If you've enjoyed this video, why not get your own bear DNA and create your own park full of bears? But failing that, you could like and subscribe to this YouTube channel and watch some other videos, etc. Good day, sir. And remember, it doesn't matter whether or not you should do it, it's whether or not you could. Just do it! Just, just do it! Bye!